Hello, Unit 6 review. Okay, you're just taking the graph of the number line and you're writing the inequality for it. Okay, you have a circle above a negative 2, it's filled in, it goes to the right. Just one circle, so I put x with the number that the circle's above, which is negative 2. Okay. Okay, when it goes this way, it has to eat the letter, eat the variable. Okay, and then there's going to be a line underneath it. <coughs> okay, number two, when I look at the number line, the circle starts at 11, then goes this way to the left, so that's 10, 9, 8, all that. So X and 11, you can pick any letter you want, it doesn't matter. And when it's going this way, it has to eat the number, eat the number value. And we don't put the equals to line because it's not colored in. <coughs> okay, now there's two circles above negative 10 and negative 2, and then the circles are connected. So that means that's negative 10 is the minimum, negative 2 is the maximum. So to write a minimum, maximum inequality, we put x. We put that value there, negative 2 on that side, negative 2 on this side. Then since that's the high number, you have to eat that and then you eat the x. You don't eat that number ever, okay? <clears throat> okay, the circles are open, so we're not going to fill them. Okay, now this time there's also two circles above negative 8 and 7, um, but they're going apart, so that means or, okay? Then I just put x with its starting value of 7 going this way. It means it has to eat our letter. <clears throat> with a line underneath, x, negative 8, going that way, it has to eat the number value. Okay, and there you go. Alright, now we are solving inequalities on the next page. Remember, if you have division or multiplication by a negative number, the sign has to flip. So solve the inequality, graph your solutions, and please label your graph when you're done. So we have negative 2x plus 7 less than or equal to 45. So I make the number line, put 0 in the middle. And now I see how many x's I have, just the 1. So I make a wall on that side, and there's two numbers with it, so that means there would be two operations. So you got times and plus. So you want to highlight the times, okay? And since that's by a negative, I put SW for switch. So switch the symbol. Now that's because you're going to divide both sides by a negative, but you do have an outside number that you have to take out. So I drop the sign from above because that's a plus. Because that, when I might when I subtract or add, the sign doesn't change. It changes after I divide, which I'm not doing on this step. So that's 38 negative 2 dot x. Okay. Then I divide each side of the inequality by negative 2. And now the sign changes and it's negative 19. Okay? X is greater than or equal to negative 19. So since the sign is eating the X, okay, eating the letter or variable goes this way. Because whatever value the variable is has to be bigger than negative 19. So then just label it up there. Okay, number six, 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 3. So 0. Make a number line. So I have two numbers on that side with a times 2 and a plus 1. Okay. Now we have times again, but that's by a positive this time, so that's k for keep. So we keep the sign the same. Now we do have to take out our plus 1. Okay. So that's why I put that sign, the, I, I put an inequality in the middle so I can have a, so then I know I'm set up. Negative 4 and then 2 times x. I divide each side by 2. We have x. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Okay, so I plot negative 2. I circle, but I'm not going to be filling it. But I, and I am going to be filling it. And then eat the x again. Okay, so it'll be headed this way. So x can be any number greater than or equal to 2. Okay, number 7, 18 is less than or equal to negative 6x. Okay. <clears throat> so you make a wall, and you have multiplication. It is by a negative, so you need to switch the sign. 
and you don't need a middle step because you don't have an, a number added to that expression there because you can go straight into your division. So you have x behind the symbol. You keep the x where it is. Don't be moving it around. So 18 divided by negative 6 is negative 3. Okay, so you have negative 3. You circle. You fill it. It's eating the value this time. Even though it's a greater than sign, the fact that it's eating the number means that the, the value negative 3 is bigger than anything that x is. Okay, So negative 3 is greater than or equal to x. <coughs> Okay, number 8, 1 half x less than negative 3. Okay, so we have multiplication over here. Now, it's by a 1 half, that's one number, okay? So it's times, and it's times by a positive, so the sign is not going to change. That's a keep, okay? Now, you're... It's not x is not being divided. Okay, the, there's a division line there, but x isn't on the division line. It's multiplication, so we need to divide both sides by the value, the coefficient value of one half. Okay, so negative three divided by one half, one abc two is negative six. Okay. So negative 6 is our critical number. We are not going to be filling it since it eats the value. It heads that way. <coughs> okay, number 9. 8x plus 2 is less than 5x minus 7. Okay, so you got two different x's this time. So you got to pick one of them to take out. Okay, and they're on opposite sides, so I need to pick one to take out. I'll pick the five. I usually have told you to pick the smaller one. And then subtract it from the 8x. So 8x minus 5x is 3x plus 2 less than, and that would be negative 7. Okay, now we just have this single x. It's on this side of the inequality. The operations with the 3 and 2 are times 3 plus 2. So the 3 times, it's by a positive 3, so that's keep. Okay, so we have to take out the plus 2. So minus 2, minus 2. Negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. And then we have 3 times x. Now we divide each side of the inequality by 3. x, again, the sign's not changing because I'm dividing both sides by a positive 3. So if, as soon as I see that single x with its multiplier or divider, okay, it's negative, it changes, okay. So negative 3 is your critical number, don't fill the circle, it's eating our value this time, so that is going to head this direction right there, okay. Now number 10, we have our first compound inequality, there's two symbols, so I want to make a table right underneath it, so my number line. Okay, so I start at the 3, and the first inequality I have is 3 and 4x minus 5, so 3 less than or equal to 4x minus 5. Then my second inequality, 15 is the value, and then 4x minus 5 again. So you see that expression 4x minus 5 is taken into account on both sides. Now we're trying to find the possible values for x. So x is on this side with a times 4 and a plus negative 5. So the multiplying number, the multiplier of the variable is positive, so that means we're going to keep it. Now we do have to take out our negative 5, so we're going to add 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, and then we have 4 times x. Now we divide each side by our 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and over here we have x. Okay. Now on this side, same thing. The multiplier is positive, so that's a keep. You have to take out your negative 5, so you will add 5. 15 plus 5 takes that side's value to 20, and then 4 times x. I divide each side by 4, and we have x over here with 5. So 2 and 5 are the two values, okay, both on pot, they can both be on the same side, okay. Now we circle both of them, both circles are filled because the equals to line is there. And it's 
with two it's eating the variables, so that's this way. And then with phi it's eating the values, so that would be this way. So that means x is all numbers. We have a minimum and a maximum. Okay. So remember how to label minimum maximums. You put x in between the two. And then eat the small eat the bigger than eat the smaller. Now I want to make a random problem down here, okay? Just so we're speaking the same language, okay? Because I don't want this to pop up tomorrow or the next day and have you guys, well, you didn't go over that one, okay? Well, I'm doing it. X divided by negative 2 is greater than or equal to 6, okay? It's just, I don't need a table. It's just a single inequality. Now, X is over here. Now, I want to circle dividing just like I wanted to with multiplying. And if that's a negative, you need to switch it, okay? When I have divide, I need to times then to solve it. So times, times, because you see this time the x is actually on the dividing line. See on that one, that earlier problem with the one half, x was, there was a dividing line, but x wasn't on it. Now it's on it. Okay, and then negative 12. <coughs> so you put your negative 12, you circle and fill it. And it eats the number value, so that means it's going that way. Okay. Now another one, hopefully you got room, just make up another one down here. X minus 6 less than or equal to negative 2. Now what happens if you don't have multiply or divide? Well, that's a key, okay? If I don't have to multiply, if I don't have multi multiple, the multiplication or division operations, either one of them, that's a keep. And then you just take out your plus 6 and you got your answer. I mean, if you want to put a 1 there, you can and divide by 1, it'll work. But 1 would be a positive multiplying number, so that would be a keep either way you do it. Circle fill it, it's eating the number, so we're headed that way. Okay, number 11. Uh, I need to change this problem, otherwise I'm going to be really embarrassed here in a bit. Okay, so I want you please to take that 12 and make that a negative 16, please. Okay. Okay, so it's another compound inequality, but it's an or. Okay. So I still make the table. On one side I put 4x plus 5 greater than or equal to 13. Meantime on the other side I put 7x minus 2 less than or equal to negative 16. Again, hope you got to change that otherwise it's going to not work. Okay, so my number line. And now I just solve each side independently. So you get times 4, that's a keep. Because it's positive 4. You got to take out the plus 5, so I make a middle man. Okay, it's 4 times x. 13 minus 5 is 8. Then divide by 4 on each side, and you have x and 2. Okay, then 7x minus 2 less than or equal to negative 16. So you got times 7 minus 2. That's a keep. Okay. You got an outside number. Okay, so you need to make a middle step where you add that. So 7 times x, negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14. Then divide by 7 and you have x and negative 2. Okay, so my answers are positive 2 and negative 2. So you're going to fill both of your circles because they're both equal to. So it's eating the x there when eating the variable, it means it's headed this way, and here it's eating the number value, so this way. So it's an or, which made sense because the problem started out that way. Okay, there you have it. Okay, number 12. Okay, if you see that absolute value sign, there's two things you should be doing right away. You should make a table to the side, okay? And then you should box that up and just replace that with D, okay? D stands for distance. And then on your table, you put X plus 4, 
and then x plus 4. Now after the x plus 4, you put your less center equal, but then you flip it on the other side. Now D looks to me like it's already solved for, so to have a distance of 8 units from 0, you could be at positive 8, but you could also be at negative 8. Now you're ready to solve. Sometimes you got to get the D by itself on due operations if the D has any, but they don't. Okay. Now don't forget, you also need a number line because these are greater than and less than signs. Don't forget that. Okay. So minus 4, no, that's, it's a keep. If you want to put a 1 in front of the x, you can, but it's still a keep because you really wouldn't have to divide it all. So you have x, 4. Okay, that's a keep. With these compound inequal, yeah, never mind. I didn't want to put my foot in my mouth. Negative 8 minus 12 is negative 4 is negative 12. Okay. Okay, so you circle both sides of the end. Of here you eat the, it's eating the x, okay, so eats the x, goes this way. Here it's eating the value, so it goes this way. So, or, <coughs> there you have it. Okay, number 13 and 14 is more absolute value, so you make, but it just says equals, so you don't have to make your number line, okay. Because you wouldn't know, you wouldn't have a direction to go. Okay, so box that up, replace it with D. This time D is going to have a two in front of it. That's two times D, and then it's equal to eight. And then you put x plus four, and then x plus four. Whatever's inside, whatever the D represents, goes over here. Now I have to solve for my D. Okay, because we do have it times. I don't have to worry about the keep switch because it's just an equals. So I divide by 2. So the D is equal to 4. Now where are the two places on a number line you can be a distance of 4 from 0? Well that would be 4 and negative 4. Okay, so minus 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. You can get a 0 for an answer. Because if you take 0 plus 4 is 4, the absolute value of 4 is 4, and then 2 times 4 is 8. Now over here, minus 4. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And there you go. Now the reason that one works, because if you put negative 8 in for x, negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. But the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, Okay, number 14. Um, I want to change this problem. No, I don't want to change it. Okay, The absolute value of 4x plus 1 minus 2 equals 5. Okay, So we make a table to the side. Whatever the expression inside is, I put on each side of the table. This time it's just an equals. So again, just take out the whole absolute value and just replace it with D. So it's D minus 2 equals 5. Okay, you got to get the D by itself. It's just plus negative 2, so you add 2. D equals 7. Now where are the two places you can be 7 places from 0? Well, you could be at 7 or negative 7, and now you can solve it. So you got times 4 and plus 2. You don't have to worry about the keep switch when it's just an equals. So 7 minus 1 is 6. Then I divide each side by 4. 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. And once again, I think I should remind you, D has to equal a positive. Okay? If you have D equal to a negative, it's a no solution, and you wouldn't even go to the table. But it has to equal a positive, which it does. Okay, so take 1 away, minus 1, so 4 times x equals negative 8, then divide by your 4, and negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. Alright, now it's time to do some story problems. We are putting a fence around a rectangular plot of land. We have 600 feet of fence. The width of the plot is 125 feet. Write and solve an inequality that represents the length of the plot. Okay. 
Now, when you have a value, okay, having a value is, is a less than or equal. Now, you just have to line it up. When writing inequalities, okay, you're just your best bet's just to line it up. Don't try to make boxes and tables and all that. It's going to overcomplicate things. So, you have 600 feet. Now, you're putting the 600 feet around all four sides. That's true. You have 125 feet, okay? But that's just the length and the width. So if you look at this rectangle, you have to put, there's four sides. There's two L's and two W's. So it's two times L plus two times W. And then one of the variables we need to replace. Now the, the, the 125 feet is the width. So W equals 125. Okay. So just parenthesize a W and then replace it with the 125 and it's gone. So two times 125 is 250. So now we have 2 times L plus 250 less than or equal to 600. And now I can write and solve for the length, which is what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So multiplier of positive, and that means I'm going to keep it. And I do need to take out the plus 250 with a minus 250. So 600 minus 250 is 350. And over here, you got 2 times L. Then I divide each side of the inequality by 2, and you have L. 350 divided by 2 is 175. So your length has to be less than 175. It could be equal to it. Circle. So having it equal would use up all your fence. And then you could also go less than 2, and you just have fence left over. Okay, number 16. In chemistry class, my goal is to average 84 on the tests I've taken. So far, I've received 76, 90, and 82. Write and solve an inequality that represents possible scores on my next test to meet my goal. Okay, now when I set a goal, that's a less, a greater than, or equal to. And the goal is 84. Now, you want your average to be 84. Okay. Now, we're going to go up here and write a simplified expression for my average. Well, we know average, I add, up, I add a bunch of stuff together, then divide by how many terms I've added together. But not three. You've taken three tests, but you're about to take a fourth, so you need to add three things on the top. So you got 76 plus 90 plus 82 plus x. Okay. So you're going to put 4 right there. You're never actually going to get to divide by 4, okay? Because you don't have this x value. Now, if you had the x value, you obviously could, but you don't. Then I take 76 plus 90 plus 82. I'm allowed to add those, and that's 248. So that's your simplified expression for your average. You're not ever actually able to find the average. My, and I, that's saying my job. My job. I know the average I want to be 84. I just need to find that x value that would make us greater than or equal to 84. Now, this is a keep. You do have division, but it's by a positive, so keep it. Now, we solve this a little different way, okay? You parenthesize the top. When you have one whole side being divided, you get rid of the divided first with a times, okay? So you're going to times by 4 to get, and all that does on that side is get rid of the divide by 4, and then the other side is multiplied by the exact same thing. Because a times 4 and divide by 4 cancels out, and then you have x plus 248. Then on the other side, we take 84 times 4, 336. Now we just need to minus the 248, and that's going to take me to my solution of 88. That minus that is 88. Okay, just graph it. So you got 0, you got 88, you fill in the circle, it's eating the letter, so that would be this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, last problem, number 17. Circle the word range, I forgot to do that. Okay. The dimensions of a rectangle, and also the word vary, okay, circle the word range and the word vary, 
The dimensions of a rectangular piece of equipment can vary by as much as 0.25 inches from the desirable amount. The desired length is 8 inches, the desired width is 10 inches. Writing in a coil that represents the range of each dimension. Now range, we set up a number line because there's a minimum we have to find, a maximum we have to find, and there's also a plus minus. Now the variation number is your plus minus number, 0 0.25, so we'll put that there. And then I make my number lines, both of them, there's two number lines we need to make. So you got the desirable, then the minimum and the maximum, desirable, minimum, maximum. Now the desired amount for the length is 8, the desired amount for the width is 10, okay? Okay, so to find the maximum and minimum, we have to add to 8 and minus to 8 by the variation amount. It's really easy to do, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So when I add, I get 8.25, and when I subtract, I get 7.75. So 8 and a quarter is your maximum. Seven and three quarters is your minimum. Now take out that eight, you don't need that anymore. Okay. Now to write that, you need a variable, I would use L. Okay. And then 7.75 for the minimum, 8.25 for the maximum. And remember how to label that. You eat the maximum, then you eat the variable. You don't ever eat the minimum. And the width is on the same way. Your desired amount's 10. You have to add the variation amount and then subtract the variation amount. So it's 10.25 and that's 9.75. So like over here, 10 and 3 quarters. If you take out the 10, you don't need that. Okay. So your width can be anything, is allowed to be anything in, in that range, minimum of that, maximum of that, anything in between. So you got width, and then 10.25, so you eat the 10.25, then you eat your W.